Hi, so we're going to do some electrolysis for which we need a high current DC supply. The uh, problem with high current DC supplies is getting them at a reasonable price. I mean, I've got a couple of bench supplies, but they max out at 3 amps, and we're going to need something in the region of 20 to 30 amps, so it's going to be next to useless for them. Now, I could always buy one if I want to spend a few thousand pounds on it, but I don't. So what I'm going to do is make my own high current supply from our old friend, the microwave oven transformer. This is simply one of the biggest gifts to the DIYer I can think of. They're awesome. I mean, we've already made um, a plastic repair gun, a spot welder, an electromagnet, just loads of things we've made from this. And we're now about to make our own DC supply, which is really cool. <coughs> now, I've gone through how to remove those secondary cores in a video, I think it's called preparing your MOT transformer or something, uh, where we chop them out. So the methodology I use for doing that is in that video, and it's such a piece of cake. It's, it's a kind of a five, ten minute job. It really is easy. And then you end up with a bunch of these that are just one of the most useful things I've come across. Now, in order to get that to be a DC supply, we're obviously going to pl plug it into the mains. So if you're going to do that, Protect yourself from the mains, get this bit shielded somehow, and don't go poking at it with a stick. Once you've got it connected up, shielded, leave it well alone. This bit, we're going to make into a low voltage high current. Now we're going to make it about 12 volts. The reason 12 volts is because I want 12 volts. You can make it any voltage you like. We did make it at 2 volts, so we've made one at 0.8 of a volt. So there's a whole way you can make these, and it's pretty simple stuff. You just put a coil of wire in there. One coil is going to give you about 0.8 of a volt, two coils give you about two volts, and so on. What you're interested in, really, is the amount of current that wire can handle. And, and there's a whole load of rated wires kicking about that's dead easy to get hold of from the Home Depot or from the electrical factors. This stuff is called uh, 1.5 millimeter single core. It's the cross-sectional area of the wire. It's a twisted strand wire and it's meant for lighting. And that will carry, I, th I think, it's about 20 amps or so. Don't quote me on it. The amp figures are listed in the wiring regulations. You look up the cross-sectional area, it'll tell you the amps it can carry. Much more common is this, which is twin core and earth. This stuff you get everywhere. I'm looking, there it is. And a little trick for you, incidentally, if you take the twin core and get it on its flat side and just nip into it with a pair of snips, what you can do is separate out the earth, which is always uncoated in this stuff. And this is a solid wire, incidentally. So there's the earth right there. And if you grab that earth with your snips, give it a tug, the earth acts like a saw on the PC cable and you can strip that really, really easily. We pull that back, we've got our live and neutral. And this is 2.5 mil cross-sectional area, so that'll carry something like 36 amps in it. Um, I want somewhere around about 40 amps or so, so I grabbed some twin core that was at 6 mil diameter, and this will carry 40 amps no trouble at all. So I stripped that out, and that's the stuff I'm going to use, but your wire source, it's just all over the place, it's dead easy to get hold of. The other side of the twin core I save for other things. This side you sometimes use, I only have the 1.5, which is why I didn't use that. But a length of that is what I'm going to use, and I've got four metres of it. The other thing I need, obviously, is this thing. It's a rectifier. If you follow the channel, you know that I'm always pulling apart things, and this is one that I found in a plasma television. It's actually rated at 70 amps, particularly it's on this big old chunky heat sink. And it's on this big old chunky heat sink, because I got that from a television too. You can buy them, they're not that expensive, but if you can scout them, scout them, much better. So we have those three bits, and that is all we need to make our DC power supply. Now in order to work out how many turns Dead simple. What I do is just put a couple of turns on, stick it on the live, turn it on, <laughs> read the voltage. It tells me what our voltage is coming out. I happen to know that I need 12 or 13 turns on there of this. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put 12 turns on that, and that will be my 12 volts. Okay, so there it is all wired up now. 
12 turns of 6mm is about all you're going to get in there. There's a bit of a struggle to get it in, but once you get it in, you're done. Now, there is no current limit to this. The current will be limited by the application, and obviously we're going to put an electrolyzer, so it's going to pull whatever current it can pull, but it's going to pull that at 12 volts, and we can check that easy enough, because there is my end of my tiles connected up to my uh, voltmeter. I've got the voltmeter on... AC because obviously we're going to put AC in we get AC out at the moment and all I do is plug it in I connect that one to one side of the coil which is the neutral and then the live to the other side of the coil and breaking the live I've got this little switch it's a momentary switch if I press that switch I'll get a current if I don't press that switch I won't so I plug those two in stick it into the mains Press my switch. I'm incidentally, I'm wearing these gloves in case I touch any of these men's contacts, not for anything else. Give that a press, hear it hum, and it's actually 11.2 volts. So I have one turn too many in there. Take a turn out, and it'll drop down to 12 volts. Okay, once I've done that, no worries at all. This side, it's 12 volts and it's two bare wires. So Really, I mean, I don't recommend you go doing this particularly, but here is a fully charged 12 volt car battery. This thing can pump out 600 amps in an instant. There's the positive, there's the negative, and I'm not dead. I mean, you've got to ask yourself why. The thing about voltage is it'll only push against a certain resistance. If I stuck a bare wire over there, I'd weld that wire because the resistance is next to nothing. But me, I'm a massive resistance. So when I hold the positive and the negative of something like 12 volts, there isn't enough voltage for that to push through me. I could stand here all day long. As long as I don't grab a bit of wire, or dress myself in chain mail and stand in a pool of salty water, I haven't got a problem handling 12 volts. So this side of it, even though it's not current limited, it's 12 volts, it's not to be worried about. I mean, it's not to be stupid with either. You don't want to bridge that gap because there'll be no resistance and it will arc, it will spark like crazy. So fix it down, don't go mucking around with it, but certainly don't be afraid of it. This side of it, which is your 240 volt, well, just take reasonable care. Wear gloves, don't touch it, just be reasonable in your care about it and you're gonna be fine. This side, who cares? So I just thought I'd show you that because a lot of people seem to be worried about things like 12 volt supplies. Don't understand why. Once we plug that in and it comes out, it's obviously um, AC. We want DC. Now easiest thing to do is to buy yourself a rectifier. You build a rectifier bridge out of four diodes. Again, this is rated at 70 amps. So plenty for what I want it for. And it's got little pictures on it to tell you what to do. There's a plus there, minus there, a couple of wavy lines in the center to take your AC. So these two go into the wavy lines in the centre and then out of these two we take our plus and a minus. I'll wire those up and give you a close-up of it. Okay, so finished. Where's the tongue? There it is. Dead easy to do. I'm not saying it's the world's greatest power supply but um, it is cheap, it is really easy to do and it will certainly deliver the amps. Now if you put a 5 amp fuse in this bit, you'll draw no more than 50 amps on that side before you blow that fuse. You might want to put a 50 amp fuse in line with your live here, I guess, if you want. Um, obviously, a little cage on here, put a switch on it, put a longer flex on it, but it's basically done, and all it is is a rewound transformer and a, a bridge rectifier going out to our output, and we'll connect our electrolyzer to there. It'll deliver 12 volts all day long, and it'll easily deliver the 20, 25 amps we want. Probably, well, it'll probably go up to about 60 amps, but certainly 70 amps is where that's going to be uh, problematic. If you want any more, you'll have to change your bridge rectifier to something higher rating. Here, like I say, uh, the max we'll get out of this is 130 amps before we start burning everything. So be careful with what you attach it to, because the current limiting is on what you attach it to, not this bit here. There's no current limiting here at all. Um, but... Like I say, really, really cheap, really, really easy, and it will do what we wanted to do. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching.